How to do energy balances in the presence of chemical reaction, part two. Here we discuss the same example that we dealt with in part one of this video lesson, but treated by the second method, option two, which means that the enthalpy of reaction is now available to us and we do plan to make use of it. This allows us to check that the delta H we obtain by the two methods is in fact the same. When we consult table B1 in Felder and Rousseau's book, we find two enthalpies of combustion for butane, one for butane gas and the other for liquid butane. It's important that we point out the physical state of water in these reactions. It's shown as being in the liquid phase, even though under real conditions it would be in the vapor phase after combustion. By convention, combustion enthalpies are listed for water in the liquid phase. It's therefore of utmost importance to read the fine print under reference tables because it's precisely here where it's stipulated that if the water in the outlet is to be in the vapor phase, then it will be necessary to add to the combustion enthalpies 44.01 kilojoules per mole, multiplied by the number of moles of water formed for every mole of fuel combusted. In this particular case, five moles of water form for every mole of butane combusted, so that we would need to add five times 44.01 kilojoules per mole to each of the combustion enthalpies. The resulting combustion enthalpies are the ones shown here. So, we have four combustion enthalpies to choose from, with the difference among them being entirely due to the different phases of the substances participating in the four corresponding combustion reactions. And, we are free to use any of the four combustion enthalpies, as any subsequent calculations involving them are bound to be different, since each combustion enthalpy necessitates a different reference state. We will discuss the choice of the most appropriate reference state shortly, but for the moment, we consider the issue at hand. Now that we plan to make use of the reaction enthalpy, the delta H term in the energy balance will be computed by the expression shown. To this end, it will be necessary to multiply the molar flow rate of the reacting component A by the molar enthalpy of reaction and divide the result by the stoichiometric coefficient of this component. Then, to this result, we must add a sum over the product of the molar flow rates and molar enthalpies of all the components in the outlet, as well as subtract a sum over the product of the molar flow rates and molar enthalpies of all the components in the inlet. The zero superscript attached to the reaction enthalpy indicates that it was determined under standard conditions, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. Now, the first term of the expression can be rewritten in terms of the extent of reaction of the combustion reaction. In this regard, it's recommended that students view the video lesson titled Extent of Reaction, Definition and Application to Systems Consisting of One or More Process Units. Notice that we don't multiply the enthalpy of reaction appearing in the expression shown by the moles of A entering the reactor, but rather we multiply it by the moles of A reacted, which in turn also has to be divided by A's stoichiometric coefficient. Now, we could choose either butane or oxygen as the reacting component A. In the event that we chose butane, then 200 moles an hour would be the molar flow rate of the reacted butane, which is just the difference of the 400 moles an hour butane entering and the 200 moles an hour butane leaving the reactor. If we used oxygen instead, then the extent of reaction we calculate should obviously still be 200 moles an hour. The reference state in this case differs from the one we used in option one. It should be that of the substances participating in the reaction, in the phases indicated in the reaction equation, and at the pressure and temperature of the known reaction enthalpies, generally 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. That is, the temperature, pressure and phases of the reactants and products are constrained by the re reaction enthalpy we choose. Were we to use the reaction enthalpy for the combustion of N-butane, with water produced in the water phase, the reference state would be butane gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, and water vapor at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. On the other hand, if we use the reaction enthalpy of N-butane in the liquid phase and obtained water in the vapor phase, the reference state would now be butane liquid, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, and water vapor at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere. However, since butane is normally supplied in the gas phase, 
we will use the first reaction enthalpy in order to keep the calculation as simple as possible. The table shown here summarizes the information we've gathered so far. Once more, we are free to choose the reference states of any substances that do not participate in the reaction, like innards, which is usually done in such a way as to save time and effort. This table already contains all the information regarding the mole balance, the zero molar flow rates of the components that won't participate in the reaction, and an x in the entries corresponding to the enthalpies that don't have to be calculated because they will be multiplied by zero. So, we proceed to complete the rest of the table. The procedure is much the same as the one illustrated previously in option one. The idea is to calculate the enthalpy starting from the reference state, which is not the same in this case as in the first option seen in part one of this video lesson. So, for butane gas in the inlet, the molar enthalpy we seek is just the integral of Cp between the reference temperature and that of the inlet. When we evaluate this integral, we get 2.6 kilojoules per mole, which we put in our table. We now turn to the butane gas in the outlet, following the same steps and integrating between the reference and outlet temperatures, we get a molar enthalpy of 36.5 kilojoules per mole. When it comes to the oxygen in the inlet, the molar enthalpy we obtain is 0.74 kilojoules per mole. As for the oxygen, oxygen in the outlet, the molar enthalpy obtained is 8.47 kilojoules per mole. For the carbon dioxide in the outlet, we obtain 11.6 kilojoules per mole. Remember, we already know we don't have to bother to calculate this for the carbon dioxide in the inlet. As for the water in the outlet, doing the corresponding calculations, while keeping in mind that the reference state is water vapor at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere, we obtain a molar enthalpy of 9.57 kilojoules per mole. Finally, we come to the nitrogen in the outlet. We obtain exactly the same result as we did in option one, seen in part one of this video lesson, or 7.4 kilojoules per mole. This completes our table. So now that the table is complete, we apply the equation for delta H using the extent of reaction we calculated earlier, 200 moles an hour. When we do this, the final result is obviously the same as before, minus 425,192.2 kilojoules an hour. Lastly, we need to clarify the following. Despite the apparent difference between them, both options 1 and 2, which we have treated in detail in parts 1 and 2 of this video lesson, are in reality completely equivalent, since the enthalpy of reaction delta H can be, can be obtained as shown from the enthalpies of formation by means of Hess's law.